So, part three of um, many. Today, we're looking at the first picture from the 1920s, or at least the first one on my list, and we're also leaving Hollywood behind to venture over across the ocean to Germany for a silent film some of you might have heard of called The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. With the end of the First World War in 1918 and the end of the Kaiser's reign, creativity in Germany exploded. When a German officer, Hans Janowitz, returned from the front line as a pacifist, he looked for a new way to express himself and show Germany's ability to produce something that wasn't an army or items of weaponry. With the help of Austrian screenwriter Karl Mayer, the script was written for The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, with director Robert Wine working on what would become his most famous and influential picture. Compared to the last two films I've reviewed, this 1920 German picture is dramatically short. With a running time of only 71 minutes, it is less than half the length of Intolerance and that other one. Furthermore, instead of two, the movie is split up into six acts of around 10 minutes in length. Each act ends with some sort of cliffhanger or general hook with a fast resolution just around the corner. It really sucks you in because of its fast paced and luckily ends before it runs out of steam. It most certainly does not overstay its welcome. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is a movie filmed in stages, not on sets. Every location is an art installation, with crazy geometric shapes and harsh angles, creating something incredibly stylish. But the dangerous, unnatural environment, coupled with the creaking, ominous music, lends to the atmosphere being incredibly creepy overall. Whilst the film was, and clearly was, made on a budget, it actually helps the film. This movie would not work without its strange painted on buildings and expressionistic style. No more than Intolerance would work without the 300 high foot walls of Babylon. Technically, it is a very impressive film. The title cards are striking and memorable, although there is often a little too much information trying to be conveyed in such a small and short amount of time. Also, while the music is atmospheric and ominous, too much time is spent with almost no sound whatsoever. Those are more nitpicks than anything though, as between the way the different filters are used to show light, the use of silhouettes and shadow imagery, and the impressive use of overlaid words towards the end to depict true madness, the film looks really great. Hailed as the first true horror movie and the birth of the twist ending, the final act of the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is amazing from a storytelling point of view. The previous act seems to have wrapped things up far too conveniently, so it comes across as very refreshing when everything you thought you knew gets thrown out of the window. I loved this movie. With the use of flashbacks, the way the insane asylum has the most natural set, and the way that I couldn't not think of Mickey Mouse whenever I saw the Doctor's gloves, this film will stay in my mind for a long time. The viewing is required, more than recommended. Four out of five stars. Love it.